and thanks for joining us once again here on Leading Edge. I'm your host, Jeff Smith. Coming up in just a few minutes, a leadership change for one of the area's charitable organizations. Also, I'm going to share with you and my guests the video showing his company's 2023 year that it was and how his business is rolling out new opportunities for schools here in Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, and elsewhere. But first, check this out. We are counting down the days until the total solar eclipse and the path of totality will impact several parts of Northwest Ohio, as well as other states all the way down to Texas. And if everything works out, we will be in a unique position for seeing it. So much so, many might open their doors and their property for people from other cities, other states. But before you invite in family and friends and whatnot, you might want to think about protecting not only yourself, but also your assets. It is very much a thing. And with that excitement and enthusiasm, in fact, I mean, you have local officials who are saying hundreds of thousands of folks are coming into Ohio alone. Uh, so it's a thing. And from an insurance perspective, we've seen really across the country a number of folks who are opening up their homes and deciding to rent out their properties. And these are oftentimes folks who haven't been doing this. And so with that opportunity to make some extra money, which is fantastic, uh, it does introduce some financial risk. So just really, Jeff, using this opportunity to share some simple tips, educate on those risks and what folks can do ahead of time so that they can enjoy the eclipse. It, this is not something to go into lightly is kind of what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, it's true. And, and there's really three main risks to call out. The first and perhaps biggest is liability. And so if someone's injured on your property, you could be responsible for their medical bills, which can get very costly very fast. The second is property damage. On the insurance side, we tend to see accidents involving water damage, fire damage, again, costly, and it's an inconvenience. It causes headaches, bounce back. Let, let me jump in real quick. You, yeah. the, the first thing you brought up, which obviously once in a lifetime event, celestial event, you talk about people being hurt on your property. And of course, as a parent, you think about kids on jungle gym equipment. If you've got a pool in the backyard, you worry about that. You get yourself insured for that. Do people need to think in terms of if somebody has some damage to their eyes, it could fall back on you? Ooh, that is a great question. And I I actually, I'm not exactly sure how that, how that would be approached. Um, what I can generally say is that when it comes to homeowners coverage, you know, you generally have more broad coverage. When we think of auto policies, it's pretty standard. You know what's covered and what isn't. But oftentimes we have many coverages in our homeowner's policy that we're not aware of. And that's a good one, Jeff. I'm going to have to follow up with you on that. Let's go to number two. What was the second thing? So number two is, is the property damage. And so water damage, fire damage, again, costly and causes headaches. But number three is one that folks don't think about. And this is loss of use. And so if it's a rental property that can't be rented, you're missing out on income. If it's your home that you suddenly can't live in because you're having to make repairs, you're typically going to come out of pocket to a hotel or a short-term rental. So loss of use causes loss of income generally. And these are some of the areas where insurance can come in, soften the blow. Because the last thing you want, Jeff, is to take a financial step back when you were really just trying to make some extra money. Once again, Andrew Furnath from USAA joining us talking about the eclipse and insurance tips you need to think about if you are even entertaining the thought of having people on your property, maybe even staying in your home. So what should homeowners be thinking about checklists? One of the things I saw, security and the possibility that if you are opening your property, let's say you have a few acres, you're going to let people walk on, but is that something that is insurance-based or is that just another checklist item people need to think about? You know, you raise a good point, and we've seen reports of folks who are even looking into things like event insurance, which typically is reserved for like weddings or events where you're selling alcohol. But generally, the average person is really going to be looking at two different types of coverage. You got your homeowner's policy, and you have rental property insurance, or what some call landlord insurance. A lot of nuance between the two. And this is where it gets difficult, Jeff, because really from a property perspective, your policy can look very different than your neighbors or your family members. And so the biggest message here is really to carve out those 10, 20 minutes, take the time to call your insurance company and ask, what does my policy cover? What does it not? Because it's a much different conversation having that ahead of time, educating yourself versus after when you're feeling the stress of a claim 
And at the end of the day, you're paying for this policy. It's important that you know what it covers. So as we talk about people entertaining this thought, do they go into it any different than anything else? Let's let's say there's a golf tournament and you're having people come in and stay in your home. Does does the fact this is an eclipse change anything in the in the eyes of an insurance company? You know, again, and, and, and you're going to hate me for this, but the answer is it depends. Now, we see some insurance policies written by some companies that are very narrow. So anything that would be seen as for financial gain could be determined to be commercial activity and could potentially result in your claims being denied. Um, there are other policies that cover quite a bit more. What I will say on behalf of USAA, we recently rolled out this home sharing endorsement. And so many of our homeowners aren't even aware that we automatically added on coverage. They didn't have to take action. They're not paying more for it. Um, but the key here is it happens at your renewal. So some folks might have it, some folks don't. But this is where we anchor back to that main message. You need to know what's on your policy and play some of those situations for your insurance company and say, what if this, what if that? Again, better to have that conversation up front versus after the fact. Getting something added on to your policy, how long does that process take? And are we still within a window where people can do this? Absolutely. We are in the perfect window. And what we're really pushing out to folks to do is here within the next 10 to 14 days, have that conversation, carve out that time. Some folks will have some spring break. We also use some of these friendly reminders like we just had our spring forward. The time just changed. So this is an opportunity. Look at your policy. Here's another thing, Jeff. The reality is, is that, you know, insurance rates have been increasing across the country for everyone. So also use this as an opportunity to see if there's new discounts or opportunities for you to save on your coverage. There might be something that you didn't look at or you haven't looked at in a while that can help you save some bucks. And then you can kill those two birds with one stone, make sure that you have the proper coverage, specifically if you're renting out your home or the eclipse. For people that don't know, maybe new to getting their homes uh, insured, Andrew, I wanted to put it out there. How does this work as far as adding something onto your policy and then flicking a switch and turning it off? Because Obviously, this is a once in a lifetime event. You want to have this coverage and somebody might say, I don't want to keep that specific coverage on my policy. How easy is it to turn it off? It's it's actually a lot easier than most folks think because property coverage is more tailored to you. You can add a particular endorsement and you can take it off whenever you want to. And so this would really be up to you and your insurance company. There could be some stipulations that say, hey, you got to have it on for 30 days. Hey, you chalk it up for those 30 days. But you know, at the end of the day, the main thing folks need to take away is that insurance isn't all doom and gloom. It really is. The whole intent is for peace of mind so that when the day comes, you're not worrying about what can go wrong. You're able to sit back and enjoy this event, whether it's with your family, your friends, or your guests, and maybe make a couple extra bucks along the way. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask specifically dollars and cents and what people, and this may be too broad of a topic, but what people are looking at adding something on. Obviously, you representing USAA, but just generally speaking. Yeah, you know, honestly, it's it's a difficult question because it all depends on the property that you have. Um, and so your insurance company would be able to give you that exact quote. And then at the end of the day, I mean, this is risk based. You get to decide, do I want to accept that risk and proceed without the coverage? Or do I want to take on that financial you know, risk, get that coverage to fill that gap? Um, but that's a good combo to have with your insurance company. Stay right there. When we come back, we will have some other guests join us here on Leading Edge. We'll talk about an organization in Sylvania making some changes in leadership. And that place is near and dear to my heart. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back here on Leading Edge. Great to have you, as we said on this Sunday, as the new executive director of Sylvania Area Family Services. Jason McClellan takes over an operation that historically, well, it was nothing more. It started out as nothing more than just a food pantry, but it has become so much more with its programming, its mission, and its charity. With this new leadership, we wanted to discuss the path forward. Great to have Jason here with us. Congratulations, I guess, first and foremost. Did Sylvania Area Family Services 
find you, you find it. I found it. I did. Yep. So I was at a point in my life at that at that point that I needed to make a little bit of a change. I was a little bit of an empty nester. I got two kids in college and a, yeah. and a house by myself there. So I wanted to get back to the community that I that I love so much, that I grew up in, that my kids enjoy so much as well too. Yeah. And the opportunity was there. It was it, it's always been a misnomer, and I remember going back to the days of it being just the Huntington Community Center. Mm -hmm. And I, I told you over the phone when we were talking before you came out here today, I said, I did my senior project at the Huntington Community Center. So it's always, I said it's been near and dear to my heart, and it's because it's part of my history. Sure. But, but I think what stands out for me, and maybe for you as well, what grabbed you about the mission of, of what, because it's a building, but mm -hmm. there's so much that goes on. So much going on. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, growing up in Sylvania, I didn't even know that this existed. It was, a, you know, I was just, I had no idea until I actually came in. The and, and, and the need, but also the building itself. Yeah. I mean, I just kind of did not know whether that was it happening in that area. So, um, you know, I came in and started talking to the staff and looking at what's going on, and I was just blown away. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only, like you said, the food pantry, which is, you know, remarkable, and the fact that, you know, the amount of people that we take care of and what we do and the generosity of the community, you know, to help support us. But we also have a uh, Sylvania Youth Diversion Program that we work with the police department, uh, both Sylvania. That's uh, been city. going on for years. For too. years, yeah. yes. And it's, you know, and unfortunately it kind of keeps growing, but, you know, the need's there and we're here to do it. We do back to school programs, uh, backpacks. We're working with uh, area groups to help support that as well, too. Uh, we have a uh, award-winning uh, garden uh, that we, we do, that we take care of, and we work with the Ohio State University Extension that comes out in the Master Garden and everything that we grow goes right back into our pantry. Yeah. And then we also have a summer program as far as for, for kids camp as well, too. And that's just kind of the beginning. That you know, That's where we're at right now. I'm not even thinking about where, where we're looking at going in the future. When, when you go into an organization like this, they're looking for a new executive director. What, what do you have to say to them to try to, I guess, put you a little, put your stock a little bit higher as far as ideas. What, what did you bring to the table? What do you want to see? What are the needs that you think need to be attended to? Well, first thing is, you know, coming in there, I'm sure they have plenty of great candidates. I mean, a lot of people, this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Sure. I think, you know, I brought a certain energy uh, to it as well as just my experience in helping people. I have a long history in long-term care, mm -hmm. owning and operating nursing homes throughout the area as well, too. So it's in my blood and uh, something that I want to do. And I think hopefully that kind of caught on. Uh, I always tell my, my, the staff at the, at the agency, I say, you know, really what we're here to do is try and work ourselves out of a job someday, right? So I want them, me and myself and everybody else to kind of bring that energy to every day yeah. that what we're doing. And so some of the needs that we're looking at right now that we're really concentrating on are mental health issues that are going on you know, in the community and talking to a lot of our clients that come in for the pantry, there's a great need for it, not only from the youth side, but also adult side too. So taking that diversion program that, that is there right now, really growing that out and working with partners throughout Northwest Ohio uh, is what, what our, our main goal is. Is it truly a hand up and not necessarily just a hand out? Is that the kind of mentality you're talking about? That's the mentality that I'm trying to bring to bring to it. I just, you know, we, we're, we're there to help, we're there to support and do what's needed to be done. But at the same point in time, it'd be a nice walk, look out that one day and there's no one in line for, for when a pantry is open on Thursdays. We, we hear about poverty throughout the city of Toledo. There is poverty in Sylvania. There is poverty in Oregon. There is poverty in the outgrowing or the outbound areas mm -hmm. of the main city. And you said that was one thing that kind of surprised you or you didn't did. even realize. It did, I mean, just this last month in February, we, we, uh, we serviced 2,100 uh, individuals. You know, just, just in Sylvania, just in, in the, um, our market that we take care of in that area, which was an increase of about 500 people a month than when I started six months ago. And, and that, gro that growth and that need, it has not, it has not diminished over mm -hmm. the years. You're, you're saying you're seeing it more now than ever before. Absolutely, absolutely. Talk about the youth diversion in our last 60 seconds. That has been one of the mainstays in something that's very powerful as far as the relationship with the police department. Sure. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's very it's supported real well by the city uh, uh, police department. And uh, whenever an individual a youth gets in somewhat some trouble, instead of going through the court system uh, and that whole 
stuff, you know, that yeah. whole, the whole thing. Yeah. They can come through us. We have a licensed social worker on staff, and uh, they go through a program that we have as far as getting therapy, working mm -hmm. through their programs, coping uh, exercises, all, the, all that type of stuff in order to hopefully to put them in a better position that when the program is over with, they're in a better spot to, to move on with their lives, and they don't have to go through the court system at that point in time. And I would fail in my responsibility if I didn't say in the fall you guys have a chair, uh, uh, yeah. a, an operation, a, an event that happens each and every year for fundraising. Yeah, well, we actually have two. One coming up in May. It's, uh, you know, return to the fabulous 50s. And then the big one that we do is on, on tap and on court mm -hmm. over at Centennial Park. And that's a great time. We work with a lot of area breweries yeah. and restaurants. And we have a Skittle Bots coming out this year, uh, the band. And we're going to fill up Centennial and do a lot of good things. Wonderful. Jason, it's a pleasure. Thank pleasure. you for coming on today. We appreciate it and continue good work at Sylvania Area Family Service. Thank you for having me. You bet. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. Keeping up with the Joneses, it has truly become the reality for high school programs, athletic programs in and around Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. Mommy Bay Turf was on the cutting edge of this industry, and a recent video release shows an amazing resume of the jobs completed in just the last year. Take a look at this. I want you to see this there at home before we bring on and introduce you to, I'm sure he needs no introduction, but Brad Morrison joining us on Leading Edge. Brad, as you sit and watch this, are, it's got to be one of those things you're a little bit amazed. I know you've got a great crew. I know you draw up the plans for all these bad boys, but you've got to be impressed by seeing the work you guys put in. You know, it's, it's, I, I watched Greg Dempsey on here back in January and he kept talking about the people. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not amazed completely because of the group of people we have, right down to, to Brooke in our office, to uh, the design engineers we use, the guys at Collaborative in Toledo. You know, when you surround yourself with great people like you guys do here, yeah. it's, it's pretty easy to accomplish things. So, you know. You play for the name on the front of the jersey, not the one on right. the back, right? Correct. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about how this has become such a sought-after thing for athletic programs throughout Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. I, I use that reference, keeping up with the Joneses, but I think it's fair, is it not? Oh, it is. I mean, it, first of all, there's a lot less maintenance, and it, it's harder to find people anymore to, to maintain athletic fields. There's, there's so many more events. The threshold is so much higher. You know, it, it, it really comes down to can we maintain grass, you know, and make it and keep it safe for, for that many events. And... Um, you know, it's, and keep it's, it playable. Play, playability is a big thing. Player safety, we talk about yeah. that every day when you know we come in the office, uh, and, and it is keeping up with the Joneses. I mean, I, I we did some fields west of here. Uh, they're they're all in the same league, and the first school did it. Second school the logo had to be a foot bigger. The third school the logo <laughs> had to be a foot bigger than that one. That was part of the discussion. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hundred percent. You know how how big how big's the D in defiance? You said it's all. It has been such a time since maybe the first ones were done. You're now seeing opportunities to go back out there and touch them up. Sure. You know, we started at Clyde back in 2008, then Perrysburg and Lake after the tornado. And, uh, you know, we, we've gone back and replaced all those. So I, I think the customers are happy because they are calling us back, you know, 10, 12, 14 years later. And, and it seems like it was just yesterday. Yeah. You know, we, we get in and we take the turf off and I, we still remember where things are underneath the turf 14 years later. And it, you know, it, it, it's just amazing how fast that time flies. How, how did you come upon this? Because it has, I mean, I could sit here across from you and say, I think it's been a little bit of a success for you. It has, you know, it, it's been a success for our group. It's, it's, a, it's a family affair. You know, my dad and my, we, we had a driving range in Oregon by the drive-in theater out there by Pearson Park. And, you know, the, the, the tee boxes were always perfect. The bathrooms always had to be perfectly clean. It's just how we did things. Mm -hmm. and, and schools were going past to get to Maumee Bay State Park to play golf. So they'd stop and they'd, they'd hit golf balls before they went and played. And people started asking, you know, who does your grass? How do you, you know, who's doing this? Can you do this to our football field? And Clyde High School, I know Ryan, Ryan Greedslade and Bob Bishop are probably going to laugh when they see this from Clyde, but, <laughs> you know, they called us and the first 10 minutes of the conversation when they said they wanted turf, that was our first customer. I thought they were talking about sod. Mm -hmm. So I get to the meeting and they're talking about synthetic turf. And, and we just went out and learned it. I had a friend in Indiana that did it, and you know we kind of hung out with those guys. And it's just like coaching. Yeah. You know, I don't know how many ideas are original. 
It's just getting the people to execute the plan perfectly, which is we're all about perfection and, and attention to detail. It's like I've always said, I think popular music has run out of notes. People are just reusing some of the great ideas from the past. Sure. <laughs> Talk as you go forward and throughout the course of this year. And the other thing I want to touch on, too, and you and I talked about this on the phone. You said there have been some naysayers out there as far as the, the pliability, the safety factors. We've heard it from the NFL, things of that nature when it comes to turf. You say it's not the case. It's not the case. Synthetic turf is not any more safe or not any less safe. And I know that sounds like, like kind of the safe way to lay it out mm. there. But when you look at the statistics, you know, people are getting hurt on synthetic just as much as they're getting hurt on grass. I, I know there's a lot of large entities that have come out and said we don't like synthetic turf it's not safe but what you'll notice is you haven't heard much out of these people lately mm -hmm. um, you know when when people get hurt at the highest levels you know they, they lay out the the history of this athlete all the way from middle school you know they want to know where they played what they played on and and it's it's debunked a lot of the synthetic turf is not safe and we do natural fields too so yeah. you know we actually make more money installing natural fields so you know, it's not like I'm trying to sell against it. There's just no, you know, empirical data that says it's it's less safe. We got about 45 seconds left. What is the rest of the year kind of unfold for you guys? Well, you know, this this is kind of our off season right now. We're just kind of getting things together. Yeah, I'm working on equipment, mm -hmm. sales calls, uh, getting ready to do Sandusky Edison, uh, some fields at Wright State, uh, another one in West Virginia will be down in Florida later in the fall. You know, this is a lot of the school levies were... Have job, will travel. Do you guys bring the stuff down there oh, yeah. or do you find it down there? No, nope, we, we, we put everything on semis and go, but My a lot of school levies last night and a lot of people yeah. now can make decisions on that, those, yeah. those projects. Brad, great to see you. Conti Thank continued you. success. We appreciate the time on Leading Edge. Thank you. You bet. We'll be back right after this. Once again, a big thank you to our guests this week. And, of course, couldn't do this without you there. Thank you so much for watching Leading Edge once again this week. If you missed any part of our discussion, you can check it out on the WTOL 11 YouTube page. And, of course, this has turned into a podcast as well. Find it where you get your podcasts. I'm Jeff Smith. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time on Leading Edge.